Xbox 2024 Summer Showcase is now in the books, and the overwhelming consensus is that the showcase was a hit. And you know what? I agree. It, it did a lot, not only to save what was becoming a bore fest of a bundle of showcases, but it helped the Xbox brand find some relevancy during a time where gamers are thirsty to see what is coming next in the world of gaming. However, we do have the atypical haters, as we should expect, who say the showcase was a failure. I don't want to address them this time around. We'll deal with those folks later. More importantly, I want to talk to those who are saying that this showcase was a 10 out of a 10 and the best Xbox showcase ever. As you can tell, I want to push back on this because I feel like emotions are running high. And when we let that happen without too much thought, we often throw away standards in a way that harm us as consumers in the long run. So here it is my take, my take on what's going on here with the reaction to the Xbox showcase. Thank you for joining us. This is the spiel. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and MM2K Gaming back again with another episode of The Spill. This is where we give news, commentary, and rants about the latest and greatest topics in the gaming stratosphere. All right, so to help you guys fully understand where I'm coming from with this take, I do want to do this. So I'm going to show you guys something that I tweeted out before I did this recording. Um, and then we're going to break it down as we go over these tweets, right? And then I, I want to address what I think is happening, why people are going outside of what I think is the realm of fathomability when it comes to the showcase and, and probably give everybody some proper warning to reflect. Okay. So with that being said, let's go take a look on what I had to say about the reaction to the showcase. Okay. So here's a tweet that I put out and I say, I think two things can be very true at the same time. PlayStation has ish to bed in mind share and roadmap where xbox really embarrassed them this year i meant to say so far in regards that frustration with playstation has led many to score the xbox showcase too enthusiastically i can see any score between a seven and a nine i go as high as nine because you got a solid showcase of promising looking games consistently little filler um and you got a great synopsis of stuff coming I go as low as seven because we got missing dates, too many cinematic trailers, and visual slash scope downgrades and critical titles. I continue to say anything lower than a seven is hate or ridiculous standards. Anything greater than a nine is either frustration slash hate towards Sony or low standards. Where were the mic drop moments? Now here I'm trying to describe what's going on with, with these things, the showcase being rated over a nine. I asked people that rated over a nine, where were the mic drop moments of similar to Sony 2016 or better yet, for those that are saying this is the best Xbox showcase ever, where was the moments like Bioshock or Fallout 3? Those, those moments must be present in an arguable score of greater than nine out of 10, right? I close out by saying, so in closing, I enjoyed what I saw. It was a breath of fresh air to a year lacking in fanfare and a waste of a game fest. That said, stop letting your emotions cannibalize standards. Y'all go anywhere the breeze blows. Sheesh. Forthcoming video. And of course, this is the forthcoming video. So I, I, let, let's go, let, let's take this chunk by chunk. First, let's address the fact, the overall fact, and let's call it what it is, okay? Um, I do think two things can be a, can be true at the same time. I do think we can look at this Xbox showcase, be excited for it, and be like, oh man, this is great. Not only is this great because, man, we ain't really seen a good showcase this year, but you can be excited that Xbox's brand now is like, is peering its head and showing some relevancy, so showing some lifeline with all the bad news that they've been accumulating and all the disappointments they've made people suffer through it's it, it feels like that with this showcase 
they might have finally found a spot to where they can find some type of consistent praise and find some consistent accolades and more importantly, some consistent way to give gamers more and enhance gaming in a consistently positive way all the way through. We're not just talking about cheaper gaming because cheaper gaming, as we know, is going to bring down the quality in games, right? And the, their entry into cheaper gaming is Game Pass. So just relying solely on Game Pass is not going to do it because even as Mike Yabara has stated earlier on Twitter, it's not sustainable. I think all I think we should all know that right now. No, no, it's not science. It, it it's not sustainable. So we need that Game Pass option to be centered around, or needs. We need other things centered around it rather. That, that adds value to gamers, not just budget wise, but adds value as far as quality of content. And, and again, I think the showcase did a good job of doing that. Um, but I think what can happen is because Xbox did that and that surprised a lot of us, and then people are frustrated or just simply want to hate on PlayStation. I think we're seeing this being graded on a curve where we're seeing a whole bunch of nines and tens and we're seeing them from people who again expect who normally expect those type of standards from xbox but i think because of their frustration with playstation they're scoring this thing a 10. look if you watch this channel it, it, it's like campbell's <laughs> anybody can get it right we've been dogging out playstation people and we've been dogging out xbox people equally the same really we've been giving it more to playstation more recently than anything we we there are no holds barred on anybody that being said that's based upon standards and a lot of these playstation creators and and, and influencers and stuff like that i often agree with them because they hold things to that to to standards and like me that just happens to be the reason why they like playstation it's not that they feel like they got to wake up and defend PlayStation. A lot of people are like, look, I, I force standards. I enforce standards and I see PlayStation placating, you know, the most to those standards. That's why I give them the praise that they do. And nobody's really close. And when PlayStation like gets cocky and feels like, oh, you know what? <laughs> yeah, everybody loves us and we can do less then guess what? They're going to get that work. Anybody can get it. But I feel like rating this 10 out of 10, the best showcase ever, is not conducive to, to exercising those standards. You guys are just reacting to emotions. That's not good either. That's equally as bad, right? Like I can see again, the scores be, be, being between a seven and a nine. Nine, you know, I can understand that because... And I think that's at the higher scale. I can see a nine because, you know, it was a good showcase. It was very solid. I wouldn't score the nine. I'm barely at the cusp of like a 7.9, like closer to an eight. I can't quite give it an eight and I'll give you my reasons in a second, but you know, I can give it a nine. I can see a nine because, you know, there were some solid showings and you know what I mean? And if you're not too big on next gen technology being used like we really didn't see impressive technology through and throughout as displayed in gameplay in this showcase right but we saw enough semblance of that let's just say in fable okay fable looked impressive in a little vertical the very small vertical slices of gameplay so because of that alone I can see where someone can go like a point or so above me and go to a nine. I, you know, I can understand that. I can understand where someone is going almost a full point below me and saying a seven because there were missing dates, too many cinematic trailers, it's, you know, for stuff that we've, we already knew existed and it was always already being shown. I feel like that you are warranted a pass. If you show a cinematic trailer for something, if you're just, releasing it but if the game is already released and this is dlc or you've already shown it and have already announced it the next time you show up at a showcase you better have some gameplay right and you better have a decent or fathomable amount of it in a cinematic showcase i mean a cinematic trailer is not going to do it all right 
We also saw some visual and scope downgrades, visual downgrades in the form of Stalker, which is my most anticipated game. Um, and I think one that was highly anticipated by people in 2024, we saw significant, not, not slight, <laughs> you know, again, I think people are running high on emotion. So they're trying to brush this off. They're trying to hand wave this. Can it? These are significant downgrades. Not, and I'm not just talking about from the trailer that was shown where there was downgrades from that. I'm talking about from the most recent time that Stalker 2 was shown. This looks like a PS4 game. now. Might have some interesting set pieces to it, but it looks like a PS4 game. Now. All right. Um, and then when I talk about downgrades and scope, I'm talking about, uh, um, Perfect Dark. This was supposed to be a triple A game. When, when you think of triple A game, you got to look at the time frame that you're in and the technology being used um, outside of some shininess and maybe some ray tracing that might go into a 60 frames per second mode. I, I, I'm not visually I'm not visually impressed at all. This looks like a PlayStation 4 game in 4K. That, that's what it looks like. Um, you know what I mean? So I can understand the, the, the scale from seven to nine, a, a four point above me and some in almost a full point below me. I can get that. I gave it a 7.9. Um, yeah. So anything lower than a seven, I think is ridiculous. Hey, there, there's some people that just, you know, they won't admit it, but they feel like they got to pledge allegiance to PlayStation. So they're like, Oh no, this was trash. I mean, you listen to cold blood and eyes, um, synopsis uh, or live reaction you can't get no critical of gaming period than cold blood <laughs> you know i feel like i'm pretty critical too but you get no more critical than cold blood he gave he scored this higher than me and you can also get no no uh x no bigger xbox loather than me he scored this at an eight you know what i'm saying um at the time and then we'll, we'll reflect on it later so you'll definitely want to check on on uh, check out our official reflection scores you know what i'm saying but at the time that we were watching this he scored it an eight i gave it a 7.9 um you know what i'm saying so there are people that are hating on this and, and i feel like if you're going lower than a seven you know what i mean like six lower to six particularly 6.5 or lower if you're, you're talking about this is a six or whatever i i I, I can't I can't rock with with your analysis. I, I think you're you're either you're you're trying to hate or your your standards are ridiculously high and they've never been met. You know what I'm saying? Um, for the bulk of us, even hardcore gamers, you know, you don't align with, with, with our way of thinking, and that's fine. That being said, those that score this greater than a nine, I, I saw fit into multiple categories, and that's why I wanted to address this video directly to them. I feel like either they are just haters of PlayStation slash pro Xbox, right? We know about those people. We also know about the people that just have low standards, right? We know about those folks. You know, I was addressing that and during the showcase where, you know, I look, I've been gaming from, it'll be my 40th anniversary next year. My 40th anniversary of gaming this year. I've been gaming for, as, as long I've been gaming as as long as some of your you guys as dads have been alive right like your dad is the age of how long I've been gaming right my age might be older than your dad that being said I still you know enjoy the 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 easy pickup games and stuff like that. But every year I'm looking for, what is that that next big title that's pushing the envelope? What is bringing gaming further and further into photorealism, you know, greater lighting, and then just this innovative ways that you can create these games that immerse me in these like crazy, not just good looking, but good feeling worlds, right? That's what I'm looking for, you know? Um, when you don't have that type of litmus, I feel like that you, you, you know, you, you can just enjoy anything. I always compare it to Ruth Chris Steakhouse versus um, Old Country Buffet. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a Ruth Chris Steakhouse type of gamer. You might be an Old Country Buffet. You just might be looking to fill your belly and that's fine. But again, we're, 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 we're cut from two different claws when it comes to what our expectations are from gaming. And you might say I'm too particular, fine. 
the gamers that make the games that make you guys get all excited and creamy knuckled <laughs> for lack of a better term yes i know i'm gross but the guy the, the game the game makers that make the develop those type of games for you they have the same standards that i have and for those of you that said, oh, nobody cares what you got to say, um, nobody cares what you got to say, old head. Those same developers are also the same age as I. So I, f I feel comfortable in how I review games. Again, the people that are making the best games are my age. The people that are, that, that you know what I'm saying, that have these tough standards, that, that have the right guardrails around games, and, and their games are the ones that get put out as game of the year consistently, they have the same standards that I have. So I don't, I don't feel like I'm on the wrong path. I don't feel like I'm on the wrong side of the tracks. All right. And for those of you that are saying this is a 10 out of 10, I, I you know, whether you're doing it out of emotion, whether you're doing it out of hate, um, you know what I'm saying? You know, emotion meaning that you, 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 uh, you're doing it out of emotion or you're doing it out of, out of lower standards. The emotion parts fits into either you just hate PlayStation or you're frustrated with them and the standards are just standards are just low. You're just looking to get your belly fed. Um, consider this. How can you score this thing a 10 out of a 10 when there were no mic drop moments? There were no games shown in a way that made you go, oh my gosh. Oh my God. There were no 2016 God of War moments. There were no, even for the best Xbox showcase, there were no Bioshock or Fallout 3 moments. When those games were shown, we were blown away. There was nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? You may have been impressed by certain aspects, but nothing blew you away. If there was not a single game that blew you away, it, I think you can give a showcase a good score for consistency, but consistency cannot be just a barometer. The consistency has to be the standard. And that's what I'm talking about. I think we are killing standards by just acting emotional. I, I don't have faith in these content creators. I don't have faith in these journos. I don't have faith in these influencers. You guys will just say anything for a quick buck, for a quick response, and you will forego and cannibalize standards at the drop of a hat. I, we don't believe you. <laughs> we don't believe you, meaning we, we, we can't rock with, with these opinions. They're just emotional. Curb your emotions. Get them in check, get them in order. You know what I'm saying? So in closing, I want to say this to you guys. I know a number of you loathe my takes, and that's why some of you guys and gals will be sitting here just, you know, hiding out in the bushes, sneak watching and all other stuff. And you go, oh, I hate this guy. I hate, you know, whatever. And I, and I get why you guys don't like my takes. I shine a mirror at a lot of the stupid stuff I see and I force people to reflect on where they can do better. And trust me, I don't do things to people as my family will tell you and my closest friends will tell you, I don't have expectations or I don't do things to people that I don't expect of myself. Now, why am I this critical over takes and things like this? Because it, it should be your apparent. I want to influence or I want to be at least one of those that influence more thought provoked reactions to gaming. It's good to sit and high five and do all the other stuff or even, you know, kick the dust up, kick some rocks and show your, 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 your frustration with something. I get that, but that shouldn't be 90% of the way that we react to stuff. Too many reactions or things that are said about the, the end result of stuff. They're too irrationally emotional on Twitter, particularly in social media, to your own detriment. Companies are watching. And when you strike the wrong chord here in regards to standards and signal to them that now XYZ is the standard, y'all somehow are stunned by the end result. But if you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. Simply put, it's time to stop reacting and start thinking. And that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They'll lead you to geeks, Cloud Dose, Guitar, Knock Digital Culture, and MM2K Gaming. With that said, I appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. Until next time, everyone, on Gaming Day. Peace.